Elizabeth Stratton grew up in Greenwich, Connecticut. She graduated from Vassar and in the early 1950s became the comptroller for the CBS series Omnibus, sponsored by the Ford Foundation. Elizabeth, Betsy, began skiing at Vassar and joined the New York Amateur Ski Club, founded by Roland Palmetto. Palmetto was a sportsman, adventurer, and New York financier. His skiing began in the 20s at Williams College, but he loved skiing off Mount Mansfield, where in 1940, he opened the world's longest chairlift on leased state land. Roland was grounded in the belief that a ski area offers skiers the joy of the mountains and shouldn't be driven by profits. Coming back from World War II, he found a rising, competing interest in Stowe too commercial and sold his lift to CV Star and purchased his own private mountain and opened Mad River Glen on private land in 1948. Rowan challenged himself. He was an early kayaker. He was early in many sports. He was one of the first flyers in the, in the U.S. Air Force. He loved a challenge, and he gave us that challenge, and I, I think it on private land that we can keep it that way and not be responsive to other forces, whether they're economic forces or whatever, but we will always attract the people who just want to come for the challenge. In 1954, Betsy married Trucks Pratt, a New York banker. The couple lived in Greenwich, and she became the chief financial officer for the Ford Foundation. I guess my earliest rem memories here, really working, seeing Roland, and in those days, if you went along, there weren't any machines to groom the mountain, and there was just the patrol that was seeing that it was safe for people. There were no grooming machines. We'd all be out there side-slipping the race course to make it happen. Everybody turned up to help. But the dedication to the sport, to being here, to being the patrol, our house was here, and everybody who was on that patrol who stayed with us was here every single weekend. These were all bankers and advertising people out of New York, and you walked in, the house hadn't been heated, so when we arrived that weekend, it was my birthday in March, the ceiling had fallen. Not only had we flipped into a river down below about 20 miles, but that was typical of the difficulties of getting here, getting home. You don't know what the 50s was like when you were coming through the mud. It took, what, eight hours to get here from New York, you know, on mud roads and country roads. and It was a long way to come and be committed to come every single weekend for 16 weekends in a row and be the Mad River Patrol. As Vermont roads became paved, Travel became easier and some of that pioneer spirit gave way to family considerations, while snowcats made the slopes of Mad River more friendly. Early in 1972, Betsy and Trucks, along with fellow amateur ski club member Brad Sweat, purchased Mad River from founder Roland Palmetto. When her husband passed away three years later, Betsy bought out Brad and owned the ski area sitting on over 1,800 acres, along with its ski lodge, the barn. Given her corporate fiscal background, she knew how to manage a company, and during the 20 years she presided over Mad River Glen, she preserved its maverick character and earned a respected reputation within the ski industry for going her own way, which meant keeping the trails narrow, as narrow as the day they were designed, following the mountain contours and keeping her prices down to encourage a local following. When liability issues found other ski areas discouraging, even prohibiting wood skiing, Betsy championed what she recognized as a tradition at Mad River. From my understanding, Roland started skiing in the woods in, in Vermont in the, in the 20s, and he loved the challenge of the woods and the soft snow. You have to do it at your own risk because we can't go in and make it safe but it is very much part of being on a Vermont mountain to be able to go through the trees. And when she felt it was time for her to retire from running a ski area, she came up with the perfect plan of selling it to all those who shared her love of the mountain, its dedicated skiers. Encouraging some 1,500 faithful Mad Riverites to step up and buy shares took a few years, but she wasn't in a hurry and she even financed those who could only pay over time. And so the co-op was launched in 1995. It stands today, 27 years later, a model to her faith in the community and Roland's appreciation for this mountain. Well, I've always said that it's love for the mountain that holds the community together. 
And I think that's what Roland gave us. He, he, he just built us a lift so we could all go up and enjoy the mountain. And I've never taken the chair to the top and wished I was on the bottom. 